my finger hovered over it the button to press or not to press i pressed would you like to watch a play with me i asked and i waited for my phone to indicate a reply would she or would she not but these uncertainties made me feel the wrath of my friends because i spent time meant for them on my phone gawking at it with unblinking eyes every second seemed to be punishing me with thoughts that created different probabilities of situations i checked my phone again i checked the send messages again did i use the right words <laughs> did i use the sms lingo anywhere did i use the facebook lingo anywhere you know you know spelling my as m a ma or u as u did i sound demanding 3 minutes later my phone rang with an alert tone which most of the time embarrassed people sharing a table with me or walking beside me the world knew i had a reliance phone <laughs> Sounds like a plan. I read. I read it again. <laughs> Suddenly, I could sense the world moving again. Even though we had known each other for two years, separated by a couple of floors and a lot of cubicles, I never had the courage to ask her out. She was always on the run, an HR professional after all. <laughs> I had a white smile on my face which made one of my friends point out the tartar deposit on my canines. <laughs> All right madam, NCPA Saturday 25th of August short and sweet 6 to 8 pm. I am buying the tickets. I messaged. Yeah, she replied and that was it. It start I started waiting for that fateful Saturday. I put my leather shoes away, the ones that I usually that usually accompany me to work and started scrubbing my grey suede shoes with detergent and using a scrub that mom kept near the sink to wash utensils <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> the uniformly timed rub on the shoes were almost poetic man i saw to that i didn't miss a single spot i was never so meticulous I finally decided on the shirt I was going to wear. By Friday, my shoes were dry. <laughs> <laughs> my pants were ironed and my hair was cut. I was all set to make a good impression with an expensive haircut in the top. Designer haircut a sir is what the barber told me it was. <laughs> Designer haircut I heard it for the first time. <laughs> It was time Saturday had arrived. My scrub suede shoes, my state fit smart pants, Fab India shirt and the Samsonite man bag. <laughs> <laughs> They were all set to cooperative cooperatively work towards making a good impression. We decided to meet at 4, fetch the tickets first and gulp a couple of pints before making our way to the theater. with the intent of spending more time talking to her and not wasting time i reached nariman point by 3:30 and took the tickets she was heading from the suburbs so i thought why not wait for her at the church gate station itself <laughs> thereby saving more time and increasing the probability of quality moments between us <laughs> I waited. Not that I remember the exact time or anything, but it was 4:27. <laughs> <laughs> I received a message. Are you one of those guys who loves to reach everywhere on time and get mad at people for not making on time? No, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> the excitement of meeting her had made me restless, but this restlessness was exciting. I know what she looks like looks like of course but what would she be wearing should i hug her when we meet 
or would just a handshake would be fine. Or should I do a half lean in just in case? You know, <laughs> she does want to hug, but not too close so that you know she can just back off. All these thoughts engaged my mind relentlessly as I tried my best to make it look like these thoughts were not engaging my mind relentlessly. Just then, my phone rang, shouting out loudly for attention. I'm at the station, where are you standing? She asked. Right next to the police inquiry booth. <laughs> I looked through the moving heads, the crisscrossing platform, the moving heads crisscrossing the platform, the blurry faces, and nullified every noise in my head as my focus was set. I saw her walking towards me. This was her. She was wearing a red t-shirt, normal jeans, her footwear, not extravagant. They seemed like canvas shoes that boys usually wore. So much for my Samsonite smart <laughs> pants. And... With that bright smile and those eyeglasses that rested perfectly on her cheekbones, she came to me and shook my hands. Sorry, so sorry, I was on time, but the trains were running late, and then she went on explaining. She was cute, very cute while explaining. I nodded, I pretended to hear, yeah, I know. <laughs> we have less time now, it's almost five, our beers are waiting for us, I interrupted, where well, smiles were still persistent. As we made our way to Marine Plaza, she said, snazzy shoes, Mr. Naya. <laughs> <laughs> I scored. <laughs> the poetic rubs, they did help. She sat inside and called up for a couple of pints. I was still thinking for the right words to come by and was making a conscious effort not to stammer. We, we talked about everything from politics to Shakti Kapoor, from Sonia Gandhi to Paris Hilton. Important stuff like that. <laughs> Everything started off formally, but as time went by, it all seemed effortless. We were ourselves. And were at ease. In that magical way that happens, it may, might have happened to you all as well. We left Marine Plaza by 5.40 and were on our way to NCPA. Narman Point has always been one of the most dignified, the dignified parts of Bombay. You know, the tranquil, the calm waters, the queen's necklace, they always work their magic on me. We found our seats in the theatre and sat discussing the cast and the story, and the acts that were lined up. We laughed at a woman who tripped on the stairs also. <laughs> Poor lady, I feel bad for her though. <laughs> As the lights went out and the play was about to start, the so-called smartphone started ringing in full volume. I was in the act right away and tried to hush them. We both knew if it weren't for the dim lights, I wouldn't have uttered a single word. The play started. They were short plays, six of them sharing a screen space of 15 minutes each. We were spelled on by a couple of acts and discussed it with full gusto, criticized some of them, and spoke about what could have been done better. I was funny. She was funny. But most importantly, she knew I was funny. <laughs> As we sat next to each other, I could feel her hands brushing mine. I could feel her cold skin and a slight prick on the hand. Her face, no foundation, no makeup. Her attention to detail was minuscule as compared to the rest of the girls. She was different. Yes, she was. There was beauty in her natural confidence. She was happy with whatever she was, and I really respected that. My attention deviated from the play as my focus shifted onto this unconventionally beautiful, charming lady sharing my sleep armrest. This seemed surreal. All this while, we were separated by management and floors and cubicles. But now, here she was, right next to me, watching the play with a slight smile she was unaware of. The smile said she was enjoying the play. 
it was a long time since i had the same feeling since i shared the same madness with someone since i felt i could let go of the normal rules and expectations and conventions and just be real i was falling in love i remained still without moving my hand without staring that slight touch away her hands still tangent to mine this particular part of play was getting better and better as i could see her eyes totally in totally engrossed in the ongoing play the moment seemed perfect it was time it was time i made the first move it was time i conveyed that i was willing to be the one who wanted to see her smile to see her cry who was willing to be along with her at her best and worst who was willing to be her strength when she was at her vulnerable most i wanted to hold her hand and convey all of this simply and sincerely she didn't move she didn't move her hand as I, as i could still feel her skin i slowly moved my hand towards her avoiding any abrupt motions that would make her flinch and come back to reality my fingers were millimeters away just hovering about <laughs> they were just about to interview just then my phone rang <laughs> in full volume super loud everybody including the stage actors for a moment were looking at me <laughs> people were getting restless as my phone gave a tribute to its creators <laughs> you know how the Re reliance ringtone goes right <laughs> i considered pretending it wasn't my phone <laughs> and joining the others in mocking the thoughtless person at dinner <laughs> <laughs> but i gave myself away by jerking towards my pocket ever so slightly <laughs> I struggled to find it. It wasn't there in my pocket, though. As soon as I had it, I pressed every button, <laughs> but it just wouldn't obey. I tried to sit on it. <laughs> I busted. It didn't help. By then, by now, I had to do something to stop this cacophony. I popped out the battery. I killed it. <laughs> By then everybody in the auditorium knew exactly where I was. <laughs> what phone I had? What was the brand of my man bag? <laughs> the exact melody of my ringtone? We all could have sung it together. <laughs> I managed to look at her trying hard to hide my embarrassment. She had covered her face so as to gain some control over her laughter. <laughs> I wanted to run and hide in the restroom or a nearby hole somewhere where i could emerge long after the show was over i could imagine my sweat kickers being dipped in muck my designer haircut now reminded me of susan boyle <laughs> everything seemed to fall apart just then her fingers touched mine <laughs> It's okay she said with a broad smile on her face she held my hand i calmed down <coughs> my heart beat slowed i could stay i looked at her i looked at the stage the next act was a love story thank you